This is Moose. He's my one-ish year old ball python. And I brought him out because I'm gonna try and illustrate a point to start today's video. Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Ryan Styles Harris, joined by Moose. <laughs> and in this video today, we're gonna talk about some fundamental things that are incredibly important to just being fast and doing good on race day. And I don't think that they are talked about or stressed enough in the RC community. So we're gonna talk about it today. So what's the point that I'm trying to illustrate using a snake? I apologize for those of you that don't like snakes. I promise he's a good boy. I remember when I got my first pet as a child. I was probably about nine years old. And the ultimatum was, if I promised to take care of the creature, I would be allowed to keep it. The moment that I did not, and it started to suffer, I would have to get rid of it and give it to somebody that would take care of it. So, as many of you are very aware of this obvious illustration, the moment I stopped feeding this little creature or giving it water or keeping its cage clean, it's going to start to suffer to some extent. Its quality of life would start to degrade and over time it would eventually cease to exist. Obviously, I don't have that intention. I do my best to take care of these little guys so that we can have a mutually enjoyable experience together. He probably doesn't like this big bright light, so I'm gonna put him back in his cage and finish the rest of this video. The idea of this video was actually sparked by, I was watching a, another YouTuber who was having some fun at a track and really happy with their results and just kind of showing their race day. They started to make a statement that was kind of attributed to their success based on the fact that they loved the cars they were running because they didn't really have to maintain them. That they would take them from track to track, not do anything, and they would just continue to be successful. Now, I know that the intention of that statement wasn't so much that the cars are invincible and never require any maintenance and that they're not implying that people shouldn't maintain their RC vehicles. I know that that's, that was not the intention, I understand. This is the challenge that I think a lot of the realm of RC racing has in general. There's this interesting carryover of people that are drawn into the concept of driving a little remote control car, and they perhaps have experienced having fun with them in their backyard or out at the baseball fields or a skate park and just kind of doing all sorts of crazy fun stuff with them. And there's really no demanding competitive spirit there. You just kind of charge the car up, fill it up with gas or whatever the scenario is, and you just run it till it breaks. And then if it breaks too much, I guess you buy a new one. I don't, don't really know what the mindset would be there. But when we carry over into the realm of racing these vehicles competitively against other cars and people, there's a very, very, very big difference in the mentality and the work that goes into this side of RC. And I kind of feel like that Debbie Downer parent that there's a kid out there who's really excited about getting his little creature and then I'm over here, the pessimist, saying, well, here's the 10 reasons why you shouldn't own that little creature. I want everybody to jump into RC. I think it's great. I think that people can learn a lot, and I think that it has a positive impact in people's lives. I really do. But what I think is a healthy relationship for people to have with racing RC cars is a mindset of hard work and preparation putting in the work and doing the proper maintenance on your vehicles is tremendously important to be successful in any capacity, in my opinion. Let me use myself as an example for something that happened to me recently that kind of reminded me how important it is to do key fundamental levels of maintenance. This actually happened at the Hobbyplex and I was racing with my good buddy, Tom Ritterneck. He's a fellow TLR teammate. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. So I had the honor of pitting right next to him and I got to see and feel a lot of the things that he was doing over the weekend. 
and on paper my car was set up exactly like his because I wanted to see how our driving styles and th that sort of stuff compared. On track his car was so good getting on power. When I would rip the throttle his car would just quickly transfer some weight, grab those rear tires and it just ripped and it was really good. My car, however, when I ripped the throttle and tried to do the same thing, it just kind of like lazily transferred weight and didn't even transfer as much weight as his. So we go back into the pits and I feel the two cars and I'm compressing the suspension on my car and then on his car, just pushing the rear end up and down. When you pushed his up and down, it felt like silk. It was just buttery smooth. It was so good. I compressed my car and it was okay, but it definitely wasn't nearly as good as his. Like it, in comparison to help you understand, mine felt like it was binding. His felt like it was just absolutely, just absolutely buttery smooth. What I ended up discovering was the problem with mine was I had tried to run those uh, O-rings and shock inserts in the shock cartridge just a little bit too long. I thought I could get away with taking them out, kind of cleaning them up a little bit, repacking them and putting it back together. And they obviously worked, it wasn't seized by any means. But when it came to, we're in the spirit of competition and I wanted my car to be better than everyone else's, right? That one little routine maintenance component was keeping my car from performing at 100% in a big way. Now, I obviously had an option there. I could have owned up to the fact that I knew there was something that I could do to my vehicle to get it to be 100%, or I could just say, you know what? Ours feel different, and I'm just gonna accuse you of not telling me what you're actually doing. It's something that happens all the time in RC. I don't want you to feel like you guys, I'm attacking you guys. I'm trying to use myself as an example and then show you what I did to improve the results that I was looking for. A lot of times I think that I get really excited to buy some sort of fancy hop-up part or try a new motor or try a new tire. And then I just kind of always have this magical idea that it's gonna make everything better and everything's gonna go faster just because I use this one thing. And sometimes there are areas where a better tire is going to perform better. A motor might be a little bit faster. But over time, when we're looking for things like consistency and progress, most of that is going to come from the amount of work that you're willing to put into the preparation side of your race program. A lot of times I'll get guys that are fairly new to the hobby and getting into the racing side and they might come up to me at the track and they'll ask me hey ryan my car isn't doing so good um can you look at it and suggest some things for me and i might do a couple things and tell them how what my car is and then they'll put it on their car but i know that they didn't do things like are your shocks 100 percent fresh new and smooth like mine if not then the setup change advice that I just gave you, you're not gonna get the same results that I have because of that disparity right there. Did you take the time to make sure that everything is the same from the left side to the right side of the car? Did you miss one little washer here? Did you set everything the same? A lot of these things, attention to detail and focus and thoroughness is really, really, really necessary if you want to have an enjoyable, competitive experience in the racing side of RC. Now, there's nothing wrong if you just want to show up and charge your battery, drive around the track, and then go home, and that's really your only intent. Nothing wrong with that at all. But the moment somebody starts to complain that their car is not as good as the other guy and that they're hiding secrets, but you could look at the one car and it's kind of way past due for a total rebuild and some maintenance and the other one looks like it's brand new out of the box and it's been maintained properly. I'm gonna point at that car and say, well, you need to do a lot of stuff before you can start accusing the other guy of not telling you everything and keeping secrets from you. 
Something as simple as a bad bearing in your drivetrain can cause a motor to overheat. Your car will become slower. There's a lot of things that would make your car look and feel a lot slower than the other guy. And it really just had to do with maintenance. That's it. It's not the secret motor that's not available to you. It's you didn't put in the work that was necessary to make sure that your vehicle was operating at 100%. Again, I'm using these examples because it's things that have happened to me multiple times. Multiple times I've wondered why a, my four wheel drive car was suddenly getting a little bit hotter than it should. And after an inspection and a thorough rebuild, I would find a couple bearings that were totally shot and they were not rolling the way that I wanted them to. Replaced them, went back to the track, problem solved. These are all things that I check regularly and I kind of replace them when I know it's time to replace them. Sometimes I'll just say, you know what? I don't know when the last time I replaced that or rebuilt that. So I'm just gonna rebuild it now so that I know it's fresh going into this particular race. Is it necessary to rebuild these things and build them new every single time you go to the track? Not at all. Do some of these things need to be rebuilt and maintained on a monthly basis? Absolutely. If you're not sure about these things, I've made a bunch of other videos in the past and tips and tricks videos, and there's gonna be a lot of guys at your local track that have done these things many times, and they can give you advice as to when or if it's time to rebuild something. If you're sitting at your and looking at your car and you say, eh, it's relatively clean and it's not that old, next time you go to the track, and if there's a local fast guy who's a pro or somebody who's done very well and they have a long history in the sport, let them feel your car and you can say, hey, does this diff feel like it's time to be rebuilt? Do these shocks feel smooth to you? If the answer is no, time to rebuild them, time to replace them. So I know that this video is kind of like a super long rant and I didn't really give you detailed information as to how to do these things. Every car is going to be a little bit different. Everyone has different preferences. So I would resort to your manuals. Sometimes they will have tips as to when these things need to be worked on or replaced. Reach out to your local fellow racers, see if they can give you some input as to if your car feels like it's time that it needs these things. Ask your local hobby shop. A lot of times those guys will have a lot of experience with the cars that are being run at their current track and they may be able to give you some advice on your particular vehicle. And then hopefully have some parts if you need to buy them and replace them as well. So that's going to be the end of my rant. If you guys have any particular aspects as far as maintenance related issues and things that maybe I haven't covered in detail and you would like to see that in a future video, please drop it down below in a comment and let me know and I'll see if it's something that I may be able to cover and put together for you. If you have any other general questions and things that I could answer quickly, those comments are welcome always down in my comments below. And sometimes I know there's other guys on here that jump in and they'll be able to help you out. So if there's something you're struggling with, have no fear, there is help out there somewhere. It's either in a comment down below or Facebook group or at your local track. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna have some more future race day adventure trips and things coming up soon. So please subscribe for all that future content. Hit the little bell so you know when it comes out. And then of course, like the video if you haven't. I mean, it's the end of the video. If you haven't liked it yet, what are you doing? Thanks again, guys. I will catch you in the next one.